and let it be known that we won't be a part of any decision making. We come today and let it be known that no longer can you plan for us without us being at the table. So God, we just thank you right now for those that are here today with one mind, one spirit to move forward. We know that we shall have victory in you and we shall have victory in the righteousness of why we are here today. So God, we go in peace. Give you the glory and give you the honor in the mighty name of Jesus. If everybody agree with me, say amen. 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 And amen. Put your hands together for the Lord. Just because you have a felony does not mean you cannot vote in some states. And we have to share that information. Our weapon is going to be our unity and also our action. So we were glad to drive here to be with all of you today because wherever there are people who are speaking truth to power, hitting the pavement, even in the heat, even in the rain, no matter what's happening, that's where we want to be. Good turnout. Second Chance March really trying to bring attention to opportunities and the barriers that people are facing when they come out and try to make a contribution back to society. So I applaud the leaders and give my support to see if we do more, not just in Bridgeport, Hartford, New Haven, but all over Connecticut. Yes, sir. not just to our cities and Bridgeport and Hartford and New Haven to do more for re-entry, but as a state, we should be leading the country and creating opportunities for re-entry for every citizen. Reducing barriers, erasing where you can a past where someone wants a 
contribute and have a bright future. That's our obligation. I want to do that in Bridgeport. I think we need to do it in Connecticut. Scott Ed, thanks for getting us started here. Thank you for your leadership. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Let's keep going. Let's give it up for the mayor. Come on, y'all. Y'all get better than that. Get up, is that right? Yeah. right? This incarceration thing has touched everyone's family, whether people want to admit it or not. I've seen the governor's staff walking around wanting to do a report, give them a report that the formerly incarcerated are alive and well in the state, and we're going to keep mobilizing around this state and keep galvanizing around this state and keep registering people to vote around this state. That's the report to give them. This is not a moment, this is a movement, this is a long, long movement, and I've been in it for a long time. One of the chants that I, I really like said, if we don't get it, shut it down. If we don't get it, shut it down. And you know what, that has to be more than just a chant. We have to shut this system down that is destroying our families and our communities. One of the biggest things that we need to be fighting against is this war on drugs. It turns 46 on June 17th. Wow. This war on drugs was was put together to take care of black people yeah. and war resistors. Okay. And look it up. It's in the history. Nixon, that was his plan for the war on drugs. It had nothing to do with drugs. It was how to disrupt our communities. And it has continued for 46 years doing just that. So when you hear people say this war on drugs is a failure, it is doing exactly what it was intended to do. And it's time for us, those who are mostly impacted, to shut it down. Thank you. After doing 17 and a half years in prison, I got a friend of mine who was to my right, Dae McKnight, that we was in the cell together. I can remember vividly like it was yesterday. I was in H block 132, he was in H block 142. And when things used to happen inside the streets that were not reflecting who we were inside the prison, because we wasn't criminals. Uh -huh. We made mistakes, but we wasn't criminals. Right. The environment that we came to, came from dictates some of our circumstances. Right. Right. And what we were trying to do was eat. It wasn't that we were bad people. So I should see things on TV and say, you know what? This is 999 reasons why I'm not coming back to this mother. You know what I'm saying? So now that I'm out here, I'm out here for my brothers that's left behind inside there. But put on a different face of what an ex-offender could look like. We all don't commit crimes. We all have crimes to crimes. But we've got a message for the governor. The message is, you got a lot of resources in the state. And we're not asking for no money, uh -huh. but utilize the resources that you have effectively. That's right. That's right. That's There's right. things that you can do effectively as far as driving license is concerned. Yes. You run the state agencies. You got DOT trucks that's flying all up and down the city streets. You can train brothers, certified brothers with class B driver's license and let them take the test at low cost or no cost. That's right. That's right. This is a public safety issue yes. in what we're talking like Barbara yes. Fair said about the drugs. Drugs didn't just pop up in our community. Right. We don't got no planes. Uh -huh. We don't fly no planes, but it's in our community. Right. The guns and the violence that's in our communities is another issue that we got to talk about. Okay. Nothing about us. Yeah. Nothing about us. Yeah. Nothing about us. Yeah. Thank you very much, and we got more to go. Yeah. We say in Arabic, Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam. I openly bear witness that there's but one God, and I openly bear witness that Muhammad is his messenger. And in the spirit of unity, I openly bear witness that Jesus is his Messiah and his Christ. So I come to you today in support and as an advocate for brothers like me who are incarcerated that can't speak for themselves. I was incarcerated with 25 years. I did 17 and a half years off the 25 in Connecticut. My mother was incarcerated. My grandmother raised me. My brother was incarcerated. One of my sisters was incarcerated. Most of my cousins been incarcerated. But yet and still, God looked in a dark place yeah. called prison and he found somebody hey. like me and like those of us here and he touched our hearts and changed us and brought out our true potential. Yeah. With or without the government agency help. They ask why is that a statement that even needs to be made. I say why, that's a good question, but first you have to ask why anyone would believe that we would need to be slaves. Explain to me, please, why is the black man dying at the rate of an endangered species? 
I say it because we've normalized abnormality. We've allowed this land of the free to lock up and cage out morality. So now we can casually see the casualty of a black man the same way we see a video game where the ghost monster kills black men. Or fly swatted by a backhand. Eric Garner got choked on camera. What happened to the justice for that man? And we see what happened to Sergeant Plan on that jazz camp. But Black Lives Matter is a move in the affirmation. We're telling the nation that a black life cannot be taken without somebody being held accountable. We are no longer allowing you to tell a mother that the life that came out of you is insignificant. They tell a cop that kills her kids and we are proud of you. It's unacceptable. It's unconceptual to get shut down in your vestibule by the ones who are supposed to be protecting you. But then I reckon you would say, but what about black on black crime? You see, black kill more blacks than anybody in the stats support those facts fine, but that's when you're trying to rationalize someone who's been 